Fredericton is the capital of the Canadian province, New Brunswick. Located in eastern Canada, the city on the St. John River is known for its historic garrison district, a British army base from the 18th century, and its galleries and artist studios. It's also a great place for those who enjoy the outdoors, as the river has excellent trails to walk or bike, and the water provides an excellent way to see the city, by canoe or kayak. Fredericton is also home to the Harvest Jazz and Blues Festival and a large number of craft breweries. So here is the list of the 10 best things to do in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for the latest upcoming travel videos. Here we go. Number 1. Beaverbrook Art Gallery. Named for Lord Beaverbrook, Max Aitken, the Beaverbrook Art Gallery opened in 1959, with funding for the original collection coming from Lord Beaverbrook. The building was recently renovated with a large expansion, and houses a painting that changed my perspective on art. That painting was a work by Salvador Dali called Santiago El Grande, a 13x10 foot painting of magnificent detail representing Spain's patron saint, James the Great, on a white horse. Number 2. Fredericton Boys Farmers Market. Okay, so a farmers market is probably not the biggest draw for tourists. When you visit the Boys Farmers Market, you'll usually just see locals. But it should be on your list of things to do in Fredericton because of just that. At the Boys Farmers Market, you'll not only see the regular things you see at farmers markets, but you'll also get to experience what is essentially a local gathering where everyone knows everyone else. From the Mennonites selling vegetables outside to the people inside making great breakfasts and coffee, it's an experience like no other in Fredericton. From the people selling their wares to the occasional performers and local politicians who show up to meet with constituents, it's a really cool place to visit when you're in Fredericton. Number 3. Fredericton Region Museum. The Fredericton Region Museum, founded in 1934, is the place to go to learn about the history of Fredericton and central New Brunswick. The museum has a collection of over 30,000 artifacts, which tell the history of the Aboriginals, as well as the Loyalists, Acadians, and other European settlers of the central New Brunswick region. Artifacts include the Coleman Frog, the 42-pound, 19-kilogram, animal that lived in a lake, north of Fredericton, 100 years ago. The museum's hours vary depending on the time of year. And in the winter, the museum can get quite cold, as it is unheated and not insulated, so be sure to dress warmly. There are actors on hand to share with you information about life in Fredericton, in years gone by. Be a guard for an afternoon, or learn an old craft. Number 4. Fredericton Botanic Garden. In 1989, a group of local residents who were passionate about botany banded together with the goal of opening a space to share their passion. In 1990, that goal was realized and the Fredericton Botany Garden opened to the public. The Botanic Garden sets out to provide recreational space, allowing the public to walk around a variety of plants and foliage. They also aim to educate people about plants. They host a variety of events, including garden parties, plant sales, and talks. The garden is open year-round and features an entrance garden, a lilac collection, ponds, and memorial gardens. Tours can be arranged if you'd like, and admission to the garden is free. Number 5. King's Landing. 20 minutes north of the city is the museum village of King's Landing, where you and your family can experience life as it was for the Loyalists who settled the River Valley after leaving the 13 American colonies at the time of the Revolution. In addition to that era of history, it illustrates life in a rural community well into the 20th century, with home and farm skills such as candle making, flax spinning, and gardening. Free interactive programs draw tourists into the daily routines, perhaps offering a chance to play an old-style musical instrument or try their hand at spinning or candle making. You can watch early tradesmen, including a printer and a blacksmith, and tour houses of people at all levels, from farmers to the local gentry. 
Kids especially love riding a horse-drawn wagon to visit the working sawmill. Number 6. Odell Park. Odell Park is sort of like Central Park in New York City, except on a much smaller scale, and far less crowded. Odell Park offers visitors barbecue pits, picnic tables, a children's playground, and a lodge. If you like ducks, a lot of them hang out around the pond there. If you love to hike, you'll find 10 miles of walking trails through a forest with trees, some of which are over 400 years old. In winter, strap on a pair of skates and use the outdoor rink. Sledding and cross-country skiing are also popular here. Visit the Odell Arboretum and the New Brunswick Species Collection. The nearly two-mile Arboretum Trail showcases 41 sites marked by plagues. I'd suggest at least a half day to explore the park, but you can spend longer here if you just want to relax for the day and see everything. Odell Park is also a perfect spot for a morning run. Number 7. Science East. More than 150 hands-on exhibits and activities bring science to life for kids, exploring animals, energy, dinosaurs, technology, insects, space, and more. They can step inside a gyroscope, be amazed by optical illusions, defy gravity on a climbing wall, and take part in daily science shows in the summer. The building itself, the former county jail, suggests explorations of how forensic science helps solve crimes today. The historical slash science displays and exhibits are in its basement museum, located in the former cells. Number 8. St. John River. The wide St. John River provides a watery backdrop to the city, and its waters and riverbanks provide a major source of recreation. Parks and trails line the banks, and the slow-moving waters are a playground for kayaks and other pleasure craft. The Bill Thorpe Walking Bridge, which crosses the river near downtown, is a converted railway bridge that's only open to pedestrians and bicycles. It is part of both the provincial and Trans-Canada trail systems. A replica lighthouse beside the river in the center of town provides sweeping views from the top, while the base doubles in the summer as a popular ice cream stand. Outside town, car ferries cross the river to connect scenic, rural roads through farms and marshlands. You can rent canoes and kayaks to join locals on the river and bicycles to follow the trails. Number 9. Fredericton Railway Bridge. This is my favorite addition to Fredericton since I left. And it's personal to me because I have a history with this bridge. My dad worked for the railway for his entire working life, and I'd often find myself out helping him fix a wire on a track, changing batteries for the signal lights, or painting a signal box. I even spent an hour or two on this particular bridge on occasion. The trains no longer run on this bridge, but people do. In the summer, you'll see hundreds of people walking here. The Fredericton Walking Bridge has made it much easier for pedestrians to cross from North to South Fredericton and vice versa. I love it so much because my parents live right at the north end of the bridge. It's easily one of my favorite things to do in Fredericton, and I use it at least a couple of times a day when I am there. Number 10. Old Government House. In Fredericton, Old Government House is the official residence of the Lieutenant Governor and home to the Queen, if and when she visits the city. The home was built in 1828. When the maintenance costs became unmanageable, the Lieutenant Governor decided to move out, and over the years, the building served many roles. It was once the New Brunswick's Institute for the Deaf and Dumb, sorry, but that's what it was called at the time, and later became the headquarters of the RCMP in Fredericton. In 1999, after an expensive renovation, the mansion once again became the official residence of the Lieutenant Governor. This National Historic Site is open to visitors as a condition of the money being made available for renovations. The Last Word So guys, this was the best list of things to do in Fredericton. Hope you will like it and appreciate it. People who come to this city are amazed by all of the awesome things there are to do and see. Simply put, Fredericton is a beautiful place. Its quiet atmosphere and scenic environment make it a great location for those looking to get away from the bustle of city life. 
Take a look through this hand-picked guide and let us know which things make it to your Fredericton bucket list. So, if you love to travel and you want to see the whole world then Tripwire is the channel that gives you a list of the best places to visit in the world. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for latest upcoming travel videos. Bye bye, see you in the next video.